asks, when Cameron said, David Cameron, that we'd have chaos with Ed Miliband, does Ed look back and laugh considering, well, all the other stuff that's gone down since then? Well, I sort of, you know, I wish I'd won the election. I mean, it is incredibly sort of ironic that he would have said that. And then, you know, within a year or so, he'd be out as prime minister. Then we, you know, because we had Brexit, you know, what and then another happened? election. What, and then yeah, another, another election. election. What is what has happened? That that's why. But you know, I don't sort of I don't look in a kind of laugh because I sort of think I wish it hadn't happened. I mean, obviously, I wish I'd won the election. But you know, some people say, I'm go not on. wishing to be cruel. There, some people wish on. that your brother David had won the Labour Party election. Some and, people and some, history would have been different. Some people do. The sliding doors Do you version. Ever regret sli- that? Do you ever regret standing? standing. Up? No, I don't. You don't. I don't because I felt I had something to say that was important about the country and where it goes. And you know, I do think there's something interesting here, which is where is political debate now? Not not sort of where was it in 2015? Where is it now? It's people. It's different parties competing on this ground of saying there are things wrong with our economy. It started with Theresa May, actually. Mm. To, to be fair to her, you know, she came into office said the burning injustices, sure. and and, jo- and then she got sidetracked by Brexit. Yeah, Johnson doesn't use the same language, but he does. He is trying to speak to that agenda. That is interesting, I think. And some of the things that I said, by the way, that were controversial when I said we should intervene in energy markets to cap energy prices, mm. Cameron said it was a Marxist universe. Now it's government policy. That's but that's why I think, in a way, the unpredictability of the last few years is partly why I think it's such a mug's game to say the next election is sure you know in the bag for anyone. Yeah, because we don't know what's going to what it's going to be like, and, and you could you could become a victim of your own success. You know, the, you get everyone vaccinated, the economy is back up and running. People don't necessarily reward you for that. They might look for other things. So. But, but also, the deep, what's the deep lessons of the last decade? The financial crisis, Brexit, what coronavirus mm. has shown tells you something that the country needs to change, doesn't it? And I think I think both parties are sort of, if you like, grasping for what does the new mm. settlement look like? You sound very passionate. You know, this is a very passionate book. It is about big ideas. But take me back to the, the, the months, the year after your defeat in 2015. Mm, thanks. Yeah, no, no, but that's, you know, but I'm just, I'm, yeah, just, I'm fascinated because it to was, put yourself out there. It was really there, rubbish. I won't use a full letter word on LBC. It was really rubbish. It was really rubbish. Yeah, it was really rubbish. Losing an election is really rubbish. There's a story in the mirror today that you went into therapy afterwards. Is that right? Uh, Well, I I was actually... No shame in therapy No, no, I'd been actually in therapy much earlier, before Ah. I was leader, and then I went back to it. Right. Uh, Maybe I should have had it while I was leader. That was a mistake I made. Um, Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd recommend it for anyone. Uh, It's, you know, it's helpful, but I definitely needed it after 2015. And it helped. Yes, it did help. I mean, my family was the thing that helped the most, mm. Justine and my boys. Um, I was walking on the street with my son Sam the other day, and a lady said to me, and I promise you I'm not making this up, she said, oh, I wish you were Prime Minister, mate. And then I had a chat with him, and he's 10, and, and we concluded that for him it was better I wasn't. Um, you know, because the life of being the son of the Prime Minister is, is not great. But, yeah, so therapy helped, um, you know, uh, you dream my of the bacon helped. sandwich in the middle of the night. The what? Sorry, the bacon sandwich. You know, I don't dream of it. I, I sort of, I, I kind of joke about Locked the bacon sandwich. I don't think I lost was the bacon sandwich. Do, do you know what I mean? <laughs> do you know how absurd that phrase sounds in itself. I, I, I mean, well, it's indeed. A, I'm sorry, I brought fair, it up, but the it very does fact sound I've got to say it? that, you know, I, I lost for deeper reasons than that. And in a way, I can't. I shouldn't sort of console myself by thinking, "Oh, it's just because I ate the sandwich." For, so, your, for your brother, it was a banana, wasn't it? For you, it was a bacon sandwich. So, it's, what is it with the Miliband brothers and food? Well, don't eat. I mean, I do. I do say, don't eat on camera. I mean, that is a, a, to anyone listening. Don't eat. Don't, I am the. I am the. I am the. The, the paradigm. Lesson: Don't eat on camera. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs>